Hi, I'm Linda Bostock. I'm a qualified medical herbalist. I've been practicing now for about 20 years in clinic. I've had busy clinics in both Berkshire and East Sussex. I hope you've seen some of my other health videos on YouTube. Today, I'm going to talk about how you can protect yourself from viruses such as coughs, colds and flus because there's always loads of them about. And the way that you need to do that is to protect yourself by boosting your immune system. Now, viruses are not killed by antibiotics. It is only bacteria that is killed by an antibiotic, which means that the only way that you have of fighting a virus is through your own immune system. And to do that, you need to take certain steps. Before we discuss what you can do internally to help protect your immune system, let's find out what we can do externally. The thing about a virus is you can only catch it from ingesting or taking in body fluids that have got the virus in it. So you can't get it from the air or drinking water. It has to be that somebody else has got the virus, then they have maybe sneezed into their hands, a chew, as you see lots of people do, and then that virus is on their hands. And then they will touch something or they will shake your hand. So you need to protect yourself from that and to do that, you need to make sure that you wash your hands when you have been in contact with other people or other objects that other people might have been in contact with. And it is a, just an easy, let's wash our hands thing. So if you've been out and about, say, shopping, when you come back, wash your hands. That's all you need to do. You're not a... a surgical person so you don't have to wash them very long but make sure that you use soap and water and just wash everything off and then give them a dry. I'll grab that towel there, um, give them a good dry. Don't get neurotic about washing hands though because our own grease that we produce on our skin produces protection for us from external bacteria and viruses. So our own good greases are good for us, but you do need to make sure that you wash your hands if you have been in contact with anybody that you think has had a virus. So that's just a little bit of hygiene for you to think about. The first thing that you need to do is to make sure that you, yourself, are really, and your family, of course, because this applies to all of you, are really well fed. The immune system basically is a load of chemical reactions going on inside your body to try and keep you healthy. Chemical reactions need something that are called enzymes to make them work. And the food that you put into your body is providing you with the enzymes and the ingredients that you need to make those chemical reactions work. So, really good diet. And by that I don't mean that you need to eat tons, I mean that you need to eat good food. So you need some source of protein because protein are the building blocks of everything in the body. And some carbohydrate, carbohydrate is the energy source, some good fats like the omega fats, omega 3 and omega 6, because the good fats are the substances that you repair cell walls with, and then all your vitamins and minerals, because vitamins and minerals are the ingredients that you need to make your chemical reactions work properly. So protein is meat, fish, eggs, beans, nuts, if you don't eat meat, 
Carbohydrate is something like rice or pasta. The omega oils are provided by fish oils mostly and eggs and the vitamin minerals mostly come from our fruit and vegetables which is why the government recommends that you eat your five portions a day. So really, really well fed. Apart from that, the immune system works by, first of all, chomping up any foreign bodies it sees. So if it sees a, a bacteria, you have got cells in your body which actually will look at the bacteria, think, oh, foreign body, don't like that, and will actually eat that up. However, if there's too many of those viruses or bacteria in the system, you haven't got enough white cells to eat those all up. So then the immune system has to kick into action and produce antibodies which will latch onto the bacteria or virus and actually kill them. So it's really important to keep that immune system in good condition. The two main substances that you need to keep that immune system in good condition is vitamin C and zinc. Now vitamin C you can get from most, oh well, all citrus fruits and most other fruits. But citrus fruits are the highest and easiest form of getting uh, vitamin C into your body. Now what I do every morning is I cut a lemon in half, <coughs> excuse me, and then just stick a fork in it and squeeze the juice into a pint of water. It doesn't matter if the seeds go in there because you're not going to drink the seeds anyway, they'll settle at the bottom. But if you don't want the seeds in there and you're a bit worried about it, then you can strain it. I'm not that bothered about it. Now, I don't put any sugar on that, in that because that is diluted now in a pint of water. And rather than drink the whole lot down, I will maybe drink some in the morning. Mm, I like that. That's a nice refreshing drink. Um, and then just keep it on the side and drink it throughout the day. So that's, you know that you've got a fair share of vitamin C in there. However, <clears throat> I don't advocate that people have the same foods every single day because just like everything else, the body will get used to that food substance and it won't be as effective in the body. So I advocate that people should vary the foods that they're eating every two, three days. So rather than have that every day, you can have a half a lime juice in exactly the same way. So half a lime squeezed into the pint of water in exactly the same way. Um, or a whole orange or a whole kiwi fruit. I've only got half at the moment because that's all I've got left. Um, but you could eat a whole kiwi fruit. So those are very good sources of vitamin C. Or you could eat a couple of pieces of fruit a day and maybe some cauliflower or broccoli. Um, those have all got some vitamin C in them. And they've also, all vegetables have got good amounts of minerals in them. The other substance that you need to make your immune system work well is zinc. Zinc is responsible, it's, it's an enzyme required for about a hundred different chemical reactions in the body. So it's really essential that we get a good amount of zinc in the body. But zinc is what's called a trace mineral. So we don't need tons and tons of it. However, in today's modern, with today's modern farming techniques, zinc is quite low in the food chain and also quite hard to absorb. So you need an intake of it every day. That is also something I forgot to say with the vitamin C, is that you don't store vitamin C or zinc in the body, so you have got to have an intake of them every single day. Now with the zinc, <coughs> these are the sources of food that are easy to get zinc from. 
So here we've got porridge, oats. You can do what you like with that, either have it in a muesli or make a porridge out of it. Then we've got peas, and those have got a good amount of zinc in it. Uh, I'm going to tell you about peanuts have also got zinc in them. Peanuts and peas obviously are the same family. And then we have pumpkin seeds, which I think are some kind of magical food because they are so nutritious. They have got some of the omega oils in them and they are also very, very high in zinc. So I say about that much pumpkin seed and you'll get your fair share of zinc every day. However, the same thing, you don't want to be eating the same foods every single day, so vary the foods that you're eating so that you get your fair share of vitamin C and zinc. The other good source of zinc is fish, if, the, if you are not a vegetarian, um, and especially all the shellfish, which are high in zinc. There are two herbs that I very commonly use to help boost the immune system and fight viruses. The first one you will probably have heard of because it gets so much publicity and that is a herb called Echinacea. Echinacea boosts the immune system by increasing those white cells that I was talking to you about that chomp up the bacteria and viruses. They're called phagocytic cells and echinacea will boost the amount of phagocytic cells that you are making in your body. Now I have, obviously I'm a qualified medical herbalist so I have the echinacea as a tincture which I use in mixtures to help people with their immune systems. But you can also get echinacea as a tablet which you will find much easier to take and you can usually buy it in good health food shops. Make sure when you're buying it that you buy a licensed product and that it is a good quality preparation. Now, if, I'm, if I am going to take Echinacea to boost my immune system, you need to take it for at least three weeks at a time and that will give you a good amount of time to help boost the immune system. And with the tincture, but remember this is me and I'm qualified and I know what I'm doing, um, I would take a, about half a teaspoon in a little tiny bit of water and I would do that every single day. Um, but as I say, you can get a tablet or a capsule and that's a much easier way of taking echinacea. <coughs> I also have elderflower here, which I absolutely adore. Now these are some elderflowers that I picked in spring when the tree was when the elder tree was flowering. And I picked those and I dried them. So if you have an elder tree in your garden or in the vicinity, you can also do that. And you will probably be able to buy dried elderflower either online or at your local health food shop. Now elderflower to me is also a wonder herb. I adore it. It has, it boosts your immune system as I'll explain to you as the echinacea does by increasing your phagocytic cells but it also has directly antiviral properties so it improves the um, way that you, sorry, it, it, it helps you make antibodies as I explained at the beginning, and directly fight the viruses. Now, to make elderflower tea, you take a teaspoon, good heaped teaspoon of the elderflower, put it in a teapot, and then add about a cupful of water, a boiling, boiling water to it. Ooh, what's happened to the kettle? It's decided to be on a go slow today. Come on, kettle. Okay, that'll do. I don't know what it's doing. And give that a little stir, and then leave that for 10 minutes. There you go. I'm going to leave that, and we'll come back to that in, a, in 10 minutes. Lid back on that. 
if you have got a cough or cold, one of the nicest things to do for yourself or to get somebody else to do for you is to make honey and lemon drink for you. Now, I know you can buy them in sachets, but it's not the same. This is the way to make honey and lemon. So we're going to have... Oh, sorry. First of all, I'm going to take some very small bits of cinnamon, about that much, and put it in my cup. And onto that, I am going to pour the boiling water. The kettle's still probably going to be on a go slow. Oh no, it's better now. So I'm going to put a cup full of boiling water on that. And then again, I'm going to leave that to steep for about five minutes. Okay, that's been standing now for just about over five minutes. And to that, I am going to add... This looks a bit naughty, but... Hey, if you've got a cough or cold, really, what does it matter? A heaped teaspoon of honey. Any honey will do. I, I like the set honey, so I'm using that, but you can use the clear honey if you want. And a good heap teaspoon of that into the hot water and let that dissolve. Now, the reason also we want the water to stand for a bit and not be absolutely boiling hot is because in a well right now I'm going to add some lemon juice into it and boiling water will kill the vitamin C off so we don't want it boiling we want it hot but not boiling hot so that honey is now melted in there and I'm going to do exactly the, uh, the same as I did with squeezing the lemon into the glass, except that I'm going to just take out these big seeds there <clears throat> and squeeze that lemon into the honey. Now this isn't as big a glass as the pint glass so I'm not going to put quite so much lemon juice in because it will go too sour. So I reckon that that's about a, well, it's half of that half, so I reckon it's about a quarter of a squeezed lemon in there. Give that a stir, and the cinnamon will have infused into that hot water, boiling water, and then the honey and lemon mixed together. So you've got honey, lemon and cinnamon in there, and you have got a really lovely soothing cup of tea that will also help boost your immune system and fight the virus. Actually cinnamon in its own right has got very good um, antibacterial antiviral properties. So here goes, cheers! I really love that drink. Uh, not, that I, not that I want to get a cold so I can drink it all the time, you can drink it even if you haven't got a cold. But if you have got a cold, it is a really nice drink. Mm. Really nice. Finally, we're back to the elderflower tea, which has now been standing for over 10 minutes because I've been showing you how to do the honey and lemon. Um, you will probably need a strainer for this. I don't own a tea strainer because I'm usually not that worried about straining tea but you probably would prefer it and we will pour the elderflower tea out there if it's ready to pour usually the flowers settle at the bottom so you don't really get too many flowers coming through so that's the elderflower tea and again that is a really nice soothing drink if you have got a cough or cold and it's got antiviral properties to it but you can drink it anytime actually i just like drinking elderflower tea so there you go that is how to protect yourself against viruses and the only way you can do that is to make sure that your immune system is in really good condition go for it